Welcome to Senior Pablo's terrifying guitar trip. Technical difficulty. I'm not even joking. Oh, I did one. I actually did this, and I think I did a lesson on it. If anyone wants to learn it, just search my channel. the actual one go. Fucking Vey thing, but uh, I don't think I think some people didn't get it, and some people hated it. It's definitely one of my most disliked videos, actually, by my subscribers. Um, <laughs> nice
Well, I think when you're first starting out, the most important thing is to learn things that are, that are easy enough that you can play them right away. So, uh, so it keeps you playing. And uh, that's usually chords. You know, just learn like a, a D chord and uh, strumming it right now again, you know. And you don't even worry about playing leads right away or anything. And if you do, you know, keep them simple, just do some, you know, bends. Still the best, uh, best sound of stuff. Robin Billy Cosby, Cyrus might play this song. Hey, give me a quarter to show you something you give a shit. Cool. Antonio sake. Soprano. Why Make sure you find a drummer. That makes it better than anything. Is you find a drummer and just play all the time. You know, it's sort of a real life thing, and it uh, your ears start to go a little bit, but uh, it's a lot of fun and makes you a much better musician. This is true. Snare drum is ear cancer. Yeah. <laughs> 
my hands before I play. And I'm going to show you some licks that help me out a whole lot. This first one has, uh, it's mostly for the right hand, picking lick. And I use sort of a twangy. Sounds like we're listening inside a helicopter. Twangy kind of guitar sound. <laughs> And I hit the A note twice. I hit the A note twice, the G, and on down. And I put a C and a C sharp in the middle. So it all together it sounds like this. Speed it up just a little bit. It sounds something like this. Is that a hammer on? Is he just playing it? This next one, also for your right hand, but works uh, the left hand a little bit too. It, uh, do it on two strings. Let me show you a version first, the simple version, which uh, is on the top two strings. I'm going to start way up high. I don't think I've ever way seen this. Way up high this. here uh, on the B note. Sort of in the key of C major or A minor. And here's a slow version. That's the pattern. And then I just take that down the scale, which sounds like this. So I only use notes out of A minor or C major. Let me try it a little bit quicker. Strings. Let me show you a version first. The simple. Sounds like this. I only use notes out of A minor C.
Fucking hell. So I'll just say it now. Basically, um, yeah, before COVID, I, I'll just fucking say it. No, because a lot of people have been asking me about it, and it's not as exciting for as, for people as it actually is. So I did a. There's a guy called Deep Forest. He's fucking international super musician god. Like, do you remember when Guthrie worked with what's his face? Fucking that composer. I can't remember his name, but he's like he's on that fucking level. His name's Deep Forest, and he writes all mad fucking shit and he, he he doesn't turn up and play the fucking manchester arena he turns up and fucking plays in front of a million people on the tv he's on that level and i did an al album covering his shit uh i sent it to him and uh, he got back to me and uh, and he, he asked me to make an album with him in this house he was upstairs i remember it and that was yeah that was my call that was my moment that was just before lockdown and um then i was thinking oh shit i need to get all my things out of the way so i went traveling and, uh, yeah, then COVID happened. Plus, who knows? He could have been pissed when he asked me. I didn't really chase him up. I mean, I've got his fucking phone number and email, so I could fucking ring him now. That'd be funny, wouldn't it? So, yeah, it wasn't Ingve. Someone asked me yesterday, was it Ingve? No, it was this guy called Deep Forest. But he is fucking... I know a lot of people won't be aware of him who are into metal, but he's, he's fucking up there. And I shit myself. And that was, like, a great moment. But, yeah, there you go. Let me try it a no little update. bit quicker. <laughs> so I can get that a little bit quicker just for fun. Now you'll find that a couple of those kind of tricky for the left hand, especially that second to last one. And even if you don't play it very fast, it's a real good warm up just to sort of get your coordination together. which uh, has sort of an A, kind of an A blues, a bunch of weird musical words that don't really, uh, don't really mean anything, but unless you know how they sound. And you don't necessarily
offs if you want to, which is sound kind of like this. Or picked again. Here's another one. You're a little more warmed up now. You've been doing a couple things. This one, uh, a little more pull-off left-hand oriented. Let me do the lick slow. It, uh, the fingering for it's one of my favorite fingerings because it's all the same. It's just uh, the, the eighth, seventh, and fifth frets on those top three strings. And then I think I do something with the root A. Those are the notes. Here's the pattern. Let me do that a little bit quicker. And one more time. And what I did is I made a little blues progression. I don't know if it's, it's not that bluesy, but it's the same chords as blues. I uh, did that one in A, and then I did one identical, well actually it's not identical, it's a little bit different, in, uh, in D, where I changed the fingering to be like this. But I do the same pattern. And then I just move that up a whole step to the E position. And then I have this wacky scale that I invented, or something I came up with, where I do that same pattern again. Here's the scale shape. So something fruity. And it sounds like this. Okay, that's a lot to remember, so let me play it a couple times, and it'll make sense because you'll be listening to I'm it. I'm still fucking tuning. Fuck off, that's not what he's doing, is it? Tape. Instead of going, you'd go. Like that. It's just something pretty neat as you speed it up. It's horrible. So I'm going to try an exercise where I start off. I'm still playing a C major scale, but uh, sound like this, real slow. I've then got I no go idea what's going on. Do another set. Wayne. Starting on that A note. Marshall. So it sounds like. So <laughs> you've been playing guitar since COVID. Um, how good are you now? When did COVID start? Was that two years ago? <laughs> I'm not being a dick, I ge genuinely am interested. So, what the fuck is going on here? Da -da 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 -da. Started because of COVID and Eddie Van Halen. Listening to that album earlier. No idea what you're talking about. Cool lick. Looking at Paul's guitar reminds me of having spaghetti for dinner. Vegan eating some religion. Um, started August 2020. Oh shit. So you've had just over a year. What can you play? You've had it. You've, so let's say you've gone from nothing. So I literally, you were like, 
My guitar's broken. Can't turn the volume off. There we go. So I'm guessing you started and you were like, you know. What can you play now? the same thing but this time I start on the C. Still C major scale. And by the way, um, some Paul Gilbert stuff I can play but if you're new and you're watching me learning this or whatever, this is fucking ridiculous. Okay, we're talking about the highest, smallest percentile of players on the planet that are capable of this and I understand what he's just done. He's, he's doing like an A minor C major scale and he's missing out notes or whatever. It's really fucking difficult, so don't be put off if you're looking at this and thinking, I've got no idea what's going on, because I'm struggling. And I go up one more. So the whole thing, put it together now so it'll sound normal. And I'll try that a couple times. One more time. You can also do it where you take a C major scale on the top two strings and just do it up and down in steps, like this. So you'd go. Oh, I see, okay. Right, so what he was just playing was... Was that it? Starting with the first note, missing this note, going straight to the third note and descending. So, so he's doing. Oh my god. Oh, fucking, that's so unnatural. Have you noticed how Paul always plays staccato? Staccato is like an Italian musical phrase, they all are. And it means there's gaps. There's an emphasis on the note, and that's because there's gaps around it. And, um... I saw another video where Paul was saying that he spent one summer with a metronome and playing everything staccato, so, you know... And that's how he's such a fucking note-for-note -note god. And so on. Sounds like that. Obviously, it's not that difficult, but when I heard it, when I'd just gone through the toilet and came back and all I heard was this. I had no idea what was going on. Um, let's have a look. Uh, hey, somewhat off topic. What do you do for your toe? This is just a fucking Kemper. Um, and it's a nightmare to do live streams because it's out of sync. I'm, I'm hearing what the interface is getting, which is a half second after I played it, so it's a nightmare. 
And it's the Top Jimmy um, Van Halen pack, 1984. Well, actually, my first time I worked with a producer was, was Mike Varney back when I was doing the Racer X stuff. And I was really surprised because... Mr. Big Records with. He's very cool, comes with lots of good ideas, and uh, knows a lot about how to get good sounds onto the record, and uh, put all the instruments together. And a lot of times I just sit back and watch these guys, you know, because... I watched an interview with Bob Rock, Metallica's producer. I think it was by Gibson. That's really good, really worth a watch, worth your time. I, they've done so many more records than I have, and, you know, I, Put in my put in my thing, but make sure that uh, you know, I keep their ideas in mind, and hopefully someday uh, I can I can know what's going on myself. Live cover. Next song. Well, here's a new uh, thing I've been doing, a new pattern with, uh, that involves string skipping. Hi, Mark. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um... You can get, I've got original shit, you can listen to it for free. It's on fucking Spotify and Amazon and Google, it's on everything. And it's on my YouTube. My last album was called Uninspired and Imprecise, and there's a song, couple of songs on there. Total Recall and Season 2. They're worth a listen, and then you can decide if you want to waste your time listening to the rest of it. It starts off with an E minor kind of shape, something like this. If you've seen any of my other instructional videos, you've definitely seen that before. It's got a couple little variations on it. I like the way it sounds. Let me play through it kind of slow. You can get the feel it sounds like Need 
fucking tab. And here's a version that's a little bit <laughs> same thing, but add a little distortion to This is my favourite era of Paul Gilbert, when he was actually using the modes instead of just all the pentatonic shit. Play things like this, it's not really as complicated as it might seem. It's just a lot of, um, a lot of small things with the same pattern. The uh, first one is that E minor one. And I'm going to pick up hammer-ons and pull-offs. Here's the uh, pull-offs. And here's the hammer-ons. And then I do a little pull-off thing here. Basic old old style that kind of thing. So the whole thing sounds like and basically take that pattern and just put it into different kind of chord shapes. Second one is a oh that would be an A major. Oh. Next one's a D major. Oh, I got it. Okay. I got it. Uh, I figured it out. Then you got, uh, that's a B minor, I guess. Okay. Then I got this wacky diminished one. Now to play things like this, it's not really as complicated as it might seem. It's just a lot of um, a lot of small things with the same pattern. The uh, first one is that E minor one, and I don't even pick everything. I do a lot of hammer-ons and pull-offs. Here's the uh, pull-offs, and here's the hammer-ons. And then I do a little pull-off thing here. You know, your basic old old style uh, electric guitar lick. That kind of thing. So the whole thing sounds like. And basically take that pattern and just put it into different kind of chord shapes. Second one is a. Oh, that would be an A major. Next one's a D major. Then you got. Okay. It's a B minor, I guess. Then I get this wacky diminished one. And then I got 
and an F sharp. Pretty much the same fucking thing. Of course, this is. I'm gonna do this really fucking slow for anyone who just is retarded like me. So, 15, 12, uh, 16, 12, 14. Um, so 14, 10, 14, 11, 12. Same thing, but on the E string. Then we've got the E one. And we've got this one. skipping lick and you do just that like in that first section you play the E string you don't even do anything to the B string except make sure it doesn't make any noise then you go to the G string and I actually do a lot of pull-offs for your right hand and then you just skip on back I think I was about 17 years old and I, I had been sending tapes to a guy in California for a couple of years, uh, a guy named Mike Varney, and he thought uh, he liked the tapes that I sent him. And when I finally moved out to California, he offered me an independent record deal. And I didn't know the difference between an independent or a major deal, so I was really What's excited. What's shit about David Elson? Did a couple and uh, putting a band together I haven't called seen Racer it, X. I've heard about it. I met the guys, uh, met them all in L.A. Some of them were going to uh, GIT, the school I was going to. I Some of the other guys I just met Kiki through, uh, through Mike Varney. YouTube. And we did the first record up in San Francisco. Took about a week or 10 days to do it and mix it really fast. We rehearsed a ton, so we didn't need to do a lot of second takes or anything. Uh, rehearsal saved us money there. It's a good idea. This is fucking true, you know. This guy is so ridiculously talented that he... That Werewolves of Analville, or whatever that last album he did, he offered people the chance to go and watch him record it live, and he's that fucking good and confident that it's like one take and he's, he's fucking done. The whole song. And we did a couple more records. Fucking awesome. Uh, played a lot of live gigs. We were actually at one point one of the bigger live bands in LA, but uh, for some reason uh, we had a hard time getting, uh, getting out. And we, we, Seemed to do uh, do well as far as we could drive. We drove to San Francisco, did good there. Drove to Phoenix, did good there. But we uh, needed some new cars or something. And uh, one day Billy Sheen gave me a call. And he just initially wanted to play some copy tracks. I went over to his house. 
house from We were kind of surprised that we both knew that because that's sort of an obscure heavy metal band. We were both in there. ever since. intensity. diet video and a hair video because including myself every metalhead has really dry awful hair <laughs> sad story. It's a story of how I saw, oh my god, look how fat I am. Fucking disgusting. Absolutely disgusting. Um, years ago, I was searching for um, 
I, you know, I've got a thing for rare Ibanez. It's limited edition Ibanez, and they did. Um, they released Paul Gilbert's. Oh, they didn't re-release it. It was just in the country, maybe. Paul, Paul Gilbert's Racer X, blue Ibanez with the pink f holes, pink knobs, and it was the real deal. Now there's a couple of different versions of it, and it was a real fucking thing. And uh, this must be like ten years ago. And uh, they had it for sale in one like a like a pawn shop. Um, I can't remember the fucking name of the shop. And they wanted a hun- like a hundred pounds for it, but it was like a three-hour drive away and this, that, and the other. But it was a hundred quid for Paul Gilbert. Not obviously his one, but it was a hundred percent. It was like a, it was like a, it was like a five grand guitar, and it was a hundred pounds. And I didn't buy it because I was a fucking idiot. But there you go. That's the worst day of my life. <laughs> About three records with Mr. Big now, and I'm going to show you some of the things that I do on those records that uh, that came out good. One of my favorites is from a song called "Green Tinted '60s Mind," and uh, the way I wrote this was kind of interesting because the last thing that I wrote in it was the uh, the guitar part at the beginning, which is probably the, the coolest guitar thing in it. Originally, I had something completely different. I just had a little chord thing. it up a little bit. And I came up with this. It outlines those same chords, but uh, it's kind of a trickier lick. Let me play it for you. Just, I just figured it out by taking each chord. That's sort of a, an E chord with the E major. So I did. And then it goes up to the suspended chord. So that's why I put that A. It happens right at that time. And I just went through the whole thing that way. Again, it's got that A. Thank you. 
I realized this year I've been playing it wrong my entire life. I used to play it like this. Where it's just this. And then I had the... The bass. So that's why I put the, the D note in there. And I still have the, the E from the low, low chord. Uh, it gets confusing when it gets slow. And ends up back at E major. It's sort of uh, interesting when you learn to play this because you're using your, both your hands and they're not really oh, close put together. A kind here. Of far Is that apart. that girl so shouting the N word the other day? The opposite of what they do when they cross. And uh, it's well. This solo, it's not really a solo, is it? This is the. Uh, I'm doing it badly because I haven't played it in a while and I've had a couple to drink. This isn't that hard. You've got to fucking. Here's the trick, right? Lock yourself in a fucking room. You gotta turn YouTube off. I, you know what? I've been really tempted recently to just do like a fucking 10 hour stream. No fucking. Obviously, I'm streaming. No fucking games. No fucking YouTube. No bullshit. You lock yourself in a fucking room. You get a metronome. And you go like this. And then you forget the rest of it. If you're the guy who's been playing for a year, it'll be hard for you, but you can still do it, and it might it might be a bit like but it can't be any worse than me. That's not the kind of thing you're gonna learn in a day. Because your left hand's moving so much and you need to be looking at the right and you don't really know what you're doing. Muscle memory. Um this is fucking easy compared to the Tokyo Solo. The Tokyo Solo is fucking disgusting, okay? a lot of your peripheral vision, it uh, works out pretty cool. Tokyo uh, solo requires a lot of stamina. Playing unbelievably fast, and that's the kind of thing that you need to build muscle and get conservation of energy and perfect technique, so it's hard. This one's from a song called Colorado Bulldog, yeah, and it's probably one of the scariest things that that I've ever played. Let's learn this it, now. It uh, involves big stretches and fast picking and fast left-handed stuff. And uh, I think the only reason that I can do it is I used part of it for a warm-up for so long that it sort of became second nature. Uh, and then uh, ended up having to add on to it, sort of reverse it. But I'll start off from the beginning. It's in the key of E. So it starts on an E. And the whole thing is pentatonic, but it's very weird fingerings for pentatonic. Uh, it's all three note per string, and it's all big stretches. It starts off on the E. Sounds like this. So there's six notes. There's another one of six starting on the next step. Next six. Next. Just keeps on going up. I'm still in the first one. I do a little string skip here. No G string in there. Another string skip between the G string and the E. And now we're on the B string and the high E. Then I slide it with my pinky to the B. That's all the ascending part. I'll do it all together. 
reason I had it in my mind it was all going across six strings. first note and do two hammer-ons and then I pick the last three with alternate picking. Starting with an upstroke, if you can believe it. Let me try that together a little bit quicker. So that's the first half. Then you do almost exactly the same thing, but down. Same notes, but I change a couple fingerings to make it easier to play. So I start on that B that I ended on and go and do descending sixes. together. Picking for this is a downstroke, then an up, a down, and an up. So I'll do the whole thing together kind of mid-tempo. Whole thing a little bit quicker. the speed. One more time. And then if you put the two together, if, uh, if you're lucky, it'll, it'll uh, come together. I'll give it a try, see how it sounds. One more time. There you go, Paul. Well, I'm happy to be using my capo. Do you want to hear a disgusting true story? I went to watch Paul Gilbert in a place called Moho in Manchester. I don't think it exists anymore. Really small club. You can get like 500 people in there. No, probably not even that. Probably about fucking 200. I went to watch Paul Gilbert there, and I had a big boil inside my mouth. This is about 10 years ago, and I was really poor. I wasn't like, I didn't know I was poor, but I was poor. I didn't give a shit about healthcare or anything. I had a massive fucking lump inside my mouth, like the size of a 50p coin or a, what, I don't know what the fuck the American equivalent is. But it, I had a boil in my mouth that was bigger than this fucking pick, and it was right at the front. 
and I was like sucking on it, pushing it. Went to watch Paul Gilbert, and uh, he started playing. I think he was playing My Religion, that sweep thing, or whatever. And it, the the fucking boil just popped in my mouth, and then at that exact moment, Paul Gilbert looked at me because I was just fucking in awe. I love him, and I was obviously like a radical fan back then. He like looked at me. And my, my boil popped, and I just had to swallow all the juice, all the sol salty boil juice. True story. It's a cheap capo, a cheap old capo. And I'm happy to and use my to rig. As a postman, the yeah. Notice the slanted frets. Supposedly allows you to play uh, 10 to 15% faster. Absolutely. 10 to 15% faster with these slanted frets. It's like being on 11. Here's a little idea that will make all of your endings to solos sound real professional and like you meant to end them there. Uh, all it is is sliding off whatever note you happen to be on and turning down your volume so you don't hear any extra noise and if you've got a reverb or a delay, you can hear that kind of end it for you, which sounds real cool. You know, anything you're playing at all, uh, if you're going... Uh, <laughs> You just slide, and when you're done with the slide, turn your volume down. So let's try that one more time with a couple other things. Let's see. And let's try one that kind of goes up. You could also slide up. You know? And whatever it is that you do last sort of hangs in the air, which I like. Gives it that, that pro sound. This next one is the intro to a song called The Whole World Is Gonna Know. It's in D minor, the saddest key, and goes something like this. And I just like it because it's kind of slow and it's got some weird kind of chord shapes in it, like this one. And I just slide up. And I'm already in position to play that C note. I do that chord there. Then I do this weird B flat chord. I'll have the music guy figure out what that's called later. sounding maybe he did and when you play this it really helps you out if you do some muting and some vibrato. Let me show get you out where of that my yard. the beginning you do time. some definite muting. Then some vibrato. More vibrato. Well, I can't stop it. And it's kind of cool to let those other strings kind of get in Don't there, you know? 
Very few instruments besides the electric guitar can have those strings pieces. warble around like that. If you can control it, it gives it a really cool sound. <laughs> Pianos can't do that. And speaking of pianos, what the pianos can do is they can write a lot of really good chords on them. So I had to use my imagination to come up with some of the chords. Fingers. It's in the key of E. Let me play it for you real quick and I'll explain it later. Sounds like this. It's called Nothing But Love, anyway. Something like that. A lot of the things that you do on piano is when you have a chord and you have a different bass note. For instance, it starts off with a regular E chord. And then I play a B chord. Fucking hell, he plays it the same way as me. Chord, but with an A. I've never seen anyone do that before. A in the bass. And people yell at me when I do it, especially because I used to do Van, because I had to sing, play Van Halen shit, you know. Fascinating. Little suspension thing on there. Then I've got an E chord with the G sharp in the bass. little trill. Then I've got this A flat chord with a C in the bass. And a C minor, C sharp minor. A D chord. An A. A B sus. And a B. This is from a song called Temperamental. It, uh, it's got pretty simple chord kind of progression in it where it just goes E, D, and A, you know. Little G thing at the end. But I wanted to make it a little bit, I don't know, just more uh, exciting guitar sound. So, Becca. Let me show you how some of that goes. First thing is just the open B, little pull off on the G string. A little 
little slide. swing feel too. You can throw in other kinds of things like your Here's a lick from my first instructional video, which I played but didn't explain. I did it in the intro solo. I can't imagine Paul and Gilbert and Steve Vai getting along. heard this part seem to really dig it and want to know how to do it. Because so Paul's just a fucking how. ridiculous uh, It sounds like this. It's guy. sort of one of those harmonic minor-ish sounding... It's like 70% is playing and 30% look at me, give me fucking attention. Let's get that kind of mysterious sound and uh, there's a lot of string skipping in it uh, basically I just use that top right I'm gonna have to go make some fucking dinner what have we learned today nothing when did we learn it today so I've literally fucking walked away with this what was that other one Fucking tea, make this private. Question my look, oh, I'm so fucking fat, it's disgusting. And this t shirt, Wayne gave me this t shirt, and it's like, it was like 10 sizes too big, it's like an American fucking large, and now I'm like filling it out. Fucking disgusting. Absolutely disgusting. Anyway, homies, maybe, um, I want to get better. I think I've got worse. And these kids are overtaking me now. Maybe I need to get my Paul Gilbert game on. Maybe I will uh, restring the... Oh, shit! I've got fucking strings in my van. I've just remembered. I bought some um, strings from Thailand. They're in my van. So I can restring my AZ24202. Maybe I'll bring that out tomorrow. Okay, right, fuck it, yeah. All right, it's going to be a lot more Paul Gilbert, but I'm going to make this stream private. Have a nice evening. I'm going to look at a fat bastard. Absolutely disgusting. Alright, see you later, homies. I'm going to go play games. Oh, by the way, if any of you are interested in like gaming and shit, let me know what you'd want to watch me play, because then I could do like two hours of guitar, half an hour of games or whatever. I'm thinking about playing Rollercoaster Tycoon 2, because I enjoy it. See you later.